Good morning. Good morning. Sige po, tayo yung manalangin. Let's prepare ourselves to uh, listen to God's word today. Lord, thank you for being here. Salamat po, Panginoon, na uh, we are in your presence right now. Lord, hindi man namin nakikita with our physical eyes, but we know through the eyes of our hearts that you are in this place. So, Panginoon, dalangin namin, Lord, that you would do a wonderful work in the hearts of each and every one of us dito. If we need healing, Panginoon, I pray that you would heal. Kung may kinakailangan, Lord God, na mas set free sa anumang bagay, Lord, set them free. Lord, kung kinakailangan na mabuksan ang mga mata, Lord, open our eyes. And whatever is necessary, Panginoon, for us to experience the reality of your presence, may it be so. And now, O Lord, as we come into the discussion of your word, Panginoon, speak to us through the scriptures. Help us to know your will and purpose for us. And uh, loobin mo nawa, Panginoon, na whatever uh, misunderstanding o anumang mga parang false concept na meron kami about who you are and ano yung purpose mo sa amin, may it be transformed today by the renewing of our minds. Marami salamat po, Panginoon, for your goodness and mercy and power that is at work ngayon sa buhay namin. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. At lahat magsabi ng amen to that. Amen. Well, amen. Amen. So tuloy tayo. This is, this is the last uh, part ng ating series na Unstuck. So I pray na for those of you who might have missed, siguro na miss nyo, di nyo pakinggan, wala kayo rito. Well, it's always available naman po in so many different ways online. Uh, you can always go to YouTube, <coughs> sorry, YouTube, uh, and uh, search yung RLCC doon. Pasensya na, nagbibina <laughs> tayo. <laughs> or of course, meron tayong... Uh, app na pwede download sa phone, yung Get Real app. Uh, if you go to our website, makikita nyo yung link para din download yung app natin. If you still don't have that, so by the way, I hope na i-download nyo yan sa mga cellphone niyo libre na bang yan. At kapag ang cellphone nyo, walang Get Real app, hindi magandang cellphone yan. Okay? <laughs> I hope you will download it. Anyway, so we are now at the last part of this series na to, and I want to conclude uh, this series in, in the right way that I believe is going to be helpful sa atin. Okay, we started off sa series na to, uh, doon sa warning signs. I hope na naging klaro sa inyo na misan mayroong mga pagkakataon na, and, and by the way, we're talking about yung situation na para na stop tayo spiritually. We're not moving forward. We're not going anywhere. Para lang tayo umiikot-ikot wherever we are spiritually, which is not God's will for us. So how would you know na yan ang sitwasyon mo? And by the way, this is uh, applicable sa lahat ng tao. Uh, whether, you know, bag, baguhan ka pa lang, matagal ka na, kahit na pastor ka pa, you can actually be in that situation na parang stuck ka o hindi ka magalaw, okay? So there are warning signs, we talked about that the first Sunday. And then yung reasons why, bakit nangyayari yun, bakit tayo napupunta sa ganun sitwasyon. And it's good to study those kasi para malaman natin na minsan very subtle yung uh, proseso ng, you know, unbelief. You know, very subtle. Uh, halos hindi mo nakahalata that you are already operating in a lack of faith sa buhay mo, no? Usually, nagmamanifest muna yan sa behavior mo, pero ang punod dulo niyan is there is unbelief that is being formed in your heart. Now, last Sunday, we also talked about getting unstuck, and uh, I hope na yun yung para ma-realize ng ilan sa inyo rito na feeling nyo na stuck na kayo. But I want to end this sermon with a grander vision. So what do I mean by this? Okay, a grander vision. Kasi I really believe na ang Ang purpose ni Lord sa atin ay hindi lang yung i-manage natin yung mga problema natin na ganyan, hindi lang yung para makaalis tayo sa mga negatibong sitwasyon, but for us to be able to live our lives in victory, you know? To be able to live our lives in such a way na hindi tayo balik ng balik doon sa ganong parang kalagayan, okay? Now, some of you may be young in the Lord, and maybe hindi nyo pa mag-gets kung pinag-uusapan natin ito being stuck in faith, kasi maybe you're still very you know, young and you're starting in your, in your trust relationship with God and everything is just exciting at this moment. And well, that's good. That's good po. But some of us dito, medyo matagal na siguro tayo. We've been walking with the Lord for quite some time. At uh, medyo kung aaminin natin, baka ito nga yung nangyayari sa atin. We're getting stuck. We're not moving forward. We're not progressing. You know, and 
Usually, yung ganyan mga sitwasyon niya, nakaka, ano yan, nakaka-discarin lang ano yan, nakaluluwa yan. Because we know it's not right, pero sometimes we don't know what to do. Okay? So, we are talking about getting unstuck. And pagkatapos natin matutunan lahat ng mga previous na mga sermons to call dito, I mean, ang question na sa mind natin dapat, na dapat natin isipin is, okay, it's good, alam ko na paano ko unstuck, pero how do I live my life para hindi ako balik na balik sa ganung sitwasyon? You understand what I'm saying? Yesterday, uh, I was invited to speak sa Quezon City in a church, in a leadership meeting, uh, to talk about uh, the marks of a Christian leader. So, kasama ko si uh, PG, of course, siyempre. And then, kasama ko rin si, uh, you know, husband and wife, uh, Andrew and, and Swanee. So, apat kami, pumunta kami doon. Going there was fine. It was, uh, you know, uneventful. Wala masyadong traffic. Praise the Lord! Diba? Sabado, praise the Lord! So, nakarating kami doon. The, the meeting was 9, uh, 9 a.m. So, maaga kami nakarating doon. So, chillax lang kami, cool lang kami. But going home, nung pauwi na kami, natapos kasi kami mga, you know, 11 something or whatever, pauwi na kami. So, yung mga kasama ko, nagutom. Siyempre, nagutom sila. So, they decided na sumaglit muna kami sa bandang timog uh, dahil na udyukan sila. Hindi siguro ng kaaway, siguro na udyukan sila ng kanilang... Uh, you know, pag nanasa sa cake, okay, so gusto nila magkaroon ng cake, so punta kami doon, siyempre, bumili sila ng mga isang libong cake, you know, and everything. But we, we enjoyed our time there. Nung pauwi na kami, okay, here, here's the problem. Pauwi na kami, so nagdodo na sa akin, na-realize ko na, actually, papunta pala sa Tibog, na-realize ko na, mukhang tumitin din na yung traffic. Okay? So, siyempre, pag gano'n na yung sitwasyon, kailangan na humingi ng tulong kay Mr. Waze. Okay, so pindot-pindot tayo, Waze, okay? Saan ang pinaka-best na daan? Ngayon, si Waze, ewan ko kung ano nangyari, baka di pa nananangalian, o you know, kulang sa tulog. Yung direksyon na binibigay niya, you know, in my heart, parang sabi ko, naka, nakadaan na ako dyan eh. I don't think that would work. Well, of course, yung wife ko sabi, oh, kaya na kasi magmarunod, magtiwala ka na lang kay Waze, okay? So, siyempre, alam, masunurin naman ako. So, anyway, so sinundan ko yung ano, si Waze, and before you know it, ayun na, na-stuck na kami. Dito sa mga kalye na ewan ko, nung tawag dyan, basta eh, sumatotal, hindi eh, kami gumagalaw. Okay? We're just stuck there and we're not moving. And uh, tapos si Waze, you know, patuloy na nagbibigay ng mga direksyon. At lahat ng direksyon na binibigay niya, alam ko na instinctively, hindi ako dapat pumupunta ron. Okay? De, pero hindi ako nakinig. Siyempre, thank you. Hindi ako nakikinig sa sarili ko mga instinct. So, sa madaling salita na na nantala kami na late kami and everything hanggang sa you know yung ibang, yung ibang appointments ko hindi ko na matutupad because wala na kaming oras and I tell that story because sometimes pagkatapos mo matutunan ng isang bagay parang hindi mo minsan masyadong pinapansin bumabalik ka doon sa mga dating sitwasyon o sistema o paraan ng pamamuhay and you get stuck again alright so, yung buhay, yung Christian life mo, parang paulit-ulit lang. Okay, maka, makaka-escape ka, babago yung buhay mo for a while, and then balik ka na naman doon sa dati na, you know, stuck ka na naman, ulit na naman tayo, counseling na naman, loving intervention na naman, and then siguro makakabalik ka sandali, okay, praise the Lord, but after a while, yun na naman. Okay? So, what we need is a, parang a framework to understand paano ba natin you know, may iwasan yung parang balik-balik lang tayo sa ganong emotional, psychological, spiritual stuckness. Okay? Kasi gusto ng Panginoon na nag-move forward tayo spiritually. Amen po ba? Ay, hindi kayo ninawa. Sige, gusto ng Panginoon na masira ang buhay natin. Okay? Okay, no, no. Gusto ng Panginoon na umusad tayo towards spiritual maturity. Amen? Gusto ng Panginoon na maging stable yung Christian life natin, hindi yung parang nahihipan-hipan lang tayo ng hangin o ng circumstances. The Lord wants us to mature and become stronger in our faith. Amen po ba yan? Alright, so, I want to talk about how to avoid getting stuck. Okay? How to avoid getting stuck. Again, siguro, pwede natin dugtog yung salitang again. Okay? Again and again and again. Okay? In fact, isang palatandaan ng immaturity at huwag kayo offend is yung parang balikan ng balik doon sa dating mong mga mistakes. Okay? And there are just basically three, ano lang naman, three, three keys na hindi mo, hindi mo mahirap, ano to, alalahanin. In fact, yung isang mga previous sermons ko dito sa series na to, some of you were saying, ang oh, haba naman, ang dami, okay? So this time, magtatapos tayo ng konti lang, okay? Three keys lang, okay? Hindi mahirap 
alalahanin at sigurado kung hindi nyo makakalimutan if you just pay attention. Amen? So, sabi mo sa katabi mo, o, oh, baba mo na cellphone mo, pay attention. Okay? Just pay attention. Right? Okay. Now, ano to? There are three keys. Okay? Here's the first key. Not so hard to understand, but very basic, very important. Kung gusto mong yung vibrancy ng faith mo, you know, hindi yun ang lalamig ka minsan, natutuyo ka minsan, minsan active ka, you know, but if you want your faith to be ika nga life-giving and vibrant and, you know, you know, malakas, well, here's the first key. Have the right vision of the good news. Have the right vision of the good news. In other words, unawa yung maigi kung ano yung nature ng invitation ng Panginoon sa'yo to what is He inviting you. Ano ba yung good news na sinasabi natin sa Bible? Because a lot of people sometimes misunderstand kung ano ba yung good news na yun. Alright? Even those na nagsishare ng good news, misan yung sinishare nila is not really good news. You know? Parang sinasabi nila pag nagsishare yung mga tao, parang, oh, anong gagawin mo pag namatay ka? Namatay na agad! You know? Ano, wala ba tayong pwede pag-usapan hindi pa ako namamatay, you know? Or pag ikaw namatay ka, pupunta ka sa impyerno. That's not exactly good news. What is the good news? Okay? Now, there are many passages in Scripture that talks about the good news, but there's, this is one that I think is very, very revealing or nagbibigay sa atin ng encouragement. Sabi sa verse 19, chapter 10, verse 19 of the book of Hebrews. Therefore, uh, brothers and sisters, Okay, since, okay, he's going to go and exhort us to do something, pero una, ipipresent niya muna sa atin yung basis. Now, this is important. Lahat ang ginagawa mo sa Christian life mo, dapat alam mo bakit. Amen? Are you, are you listening? Di ba? Yeah, mamaya, meron tayong graduation ng sacred rhythms. And it's, it's very tempting minsan na isipin mo na, ang kailangan lang, mag-pray ako, mag-sabat ako, ganyan. And you don't really know why. What you need to understand is, Yung mga practices na pinag-uusapan natin sa sacred rhythms, really, it's just a result, the result of something more fundamental. And that is yung clarity sa heart mo, sa mind mo, of the nature of the good news. Okay, balik tayo. Verse 19. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus. So the author is basically declaring or telling us ito na yung realidad. Para sa mga mananampalataya, here's the truth. Ito yung totoo, okay? We now, sabi niya, have confidence to enter the most holy place. Now, ano yung most holy place? For those of you who may not know sa Old Testament, you know, meron tinatawag na temple. At yung temple, of course, represents the very presence of God. At yung templo na yun, merong iba't ibang parte o bahagi. Alright? Merong outer court sa labas. And then, merong holy place. Pagkatapos, merong parang very special place ang tawag most holy of holies or the most holy place. At doon mismo nakalagay yung, ano, yung, yung parang kahon na may cherubim, you know, indicating the very presence of the Lord. Ang nakakapasok lang doon, okay? Ay yung high priest once a year. And it's a very holy place that if you go in ng hindi sa tamang paraan, you will die. Okay? It's so holy na meron siyang kurtina na napakakapal to indicate na nobody just goes in there ng basta-basta. And so, in the Old Testament, it has always been thought, and even in the New Testament, and even ngayon, okay, there are two... Com- <coughs> <laughs> wow, so youth, okay. Hey, anyway, there are two common mistakes na, 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 na hindi naiintindihan ng mga tao, sa isip ng mga tao, common misunderstanding to. One is, okay, na itong itong tinatawag natin presence of God and all that it entails. Okay? The very presence of God, siyempre, may kasama dyan yung all that it entails. The blessing of His presence. Okay? Lahat ng pwede ma- mangyari sa iyo in His presence. Sa isip ng mga tao, in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, and even today, the isip ng mga tao, yari para lamang sa mga special na tao. Okay? If you read the Old Testament, you will find na mayroong mga tao like Abraham, you know, Isaac, you know, Jacob, mga piling tao lang who actually experience that presence of God. You know, God speaking to them, merong theophany, o merong appearance of the Lord, may angel, ganyan-ganyan. Pero hindi lahat na tao nakakaranas nun. Alright? And down through the history, alam ng mga Jews, if you are not somebody na katulad ni Moses or whatever, you know, forget it. Okay? Hindi mo mararanasan yung mga sinasabing presence of God na yan. Okay? It's just for special people. 
And then, of course, down through the history, na conclude ng mga tao, hindi lang basta special people ang pinag-uusapan, kailangan talaga banal ka. Kailangan holy ka. Okay? Hindi marami kang butas. Yung talaga holy. Okay? You, you, you are not parang a sinner. Kaya by the time of Jesus, nung dumating si Jesus, when he was ministering, people were, ika nga, categorizing people na, uh, yung, oh, sinner yan, oh, sinner to, you know, depending pwedeng hawakan niya, hindi pwedeng lapitan niya. Because that's their understanding. Even today, ganun ang understanding ng mga tao. Alright? They're thinking na kailangan wala kang kasalanan, banal ka, because kung hindi, well, wala ka talagang, <laughs> wala kang experience na ganyan. And then another problem is that people are thinking na kung meron man, yan ay mangyayari lang after we die. Kaya nga, sa panahon natin ngayon, normal na sasabihin ng mga tao pag may namatay, well, at least nasa mas maganda na siyang lugar. Okay? And what do we mean by that? Well, nandun na siya kay Lord. Right? Kasi nung natin siya sa lupa, wala siya kay Lord. Okay? Pero nung namatay na siya, nalagutan na siya ng hininga, nandun na siya kay Lord. Okay? And this kind of misunderstanding, if you don't correct that, this is the reason bakit nang lalamig ang mga Kristiyano. Is because they have a faulty understanding of the good news. Now here's the good news. As the said to Jesus, when he, when he arrived on earth, he proclaimed, okay, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. You know, he said. Okay? Mark 1, you know, uh, verse 16. He said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, what did he say there? Hindi niya ibig sabihin na parang, Oy, the kingdom of God, parating na yan, malapit na, hala kayo, lagot kayo. No, that's not what he meant. Because if you're going to look at his life and everything, first, first, gusto ko malaman ninyo na yung mga Jews, they know, alam nila, that God is king. Hindi question sa kanila yun. It's just that what Jesus was about to teach and say, lalo na sa mga actions niya and activities niya at yung gagawin niya, as he healed people, sasabihin niya, Behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. You know, as he goes about doing the things that he was doing, here is the good news. Pag hindi nyo nag-gets ito, I guarantee you, ito yung magiging dahilan why somewhere along the way sa Christian life mo, manlalamig ka. Because you don't understand. Here is the good news. What Jesus is saying is this. Hindi yung si God is king. Everybody knows that. He is saying na ngayon, accessible na, pwede nang maranasan, before the end of the world, pwede nang maranasan the reality of the kingdom of God in your life. Through faith in Him, by following Jesus and trusting Him with all of your life, pwede mo maranasan the very presence of God as symbolized by the most holy place. Wow, di kayo excited, ha? Ako, ay, nahihirapan ako magsalita rito. Pumipiyok-piyok na ako. Hindi pa kayo... You know, I want you to understand because some of you maybe don't understand this. Iniisip nyo kasi na parang ang good news ng Panginoon ganito. If I believe in Jesus, pag namatay ako, pupunta ako sa heaven. Sorry to burst your bubble, you misunderstand the good news. The good news is that yung balang araw, you, you know, hindi, hindi yung gano'n, hindi yung balang araw, pag nag-rest in peace ka na, then makikita mo na si Lord. Wrong! Ang sinasabi ni Jesus is that ngayon pa lang, you can enter and experience the reality of the very presence of God that tinanggal na niya whatever hindrance there may be. And he started calling people, pati yung mga sinners, tinatawag niya, come, even yung mga tao, even yung, yung woman caught in adultery, sabi niya, woman, does anybody blame you? Wala na kayo, stand up, sin no more. There is going to be an experience of the healing power and the gracious power of God sa buhay natin ngayon because of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Iba sa iyo para, ah, ganun ba? The reason why I'm saying this, it's because number one, listen kayo. Don't sell yourself short. Don't ever say to yourself, ganito talaga ang buhay, you know, tao lang tayo. Don't ever say that because that is not what you are being given the opportunity to experience. Now let's pretend nakatira kayo sa isang, sa isang barrio, okay? Sa isang barrio na walang electricity, walang internet. Can you imagine that right now? Parang, Diyos ko po, ano yun? Impierno, impierno, okay? Just imagine, you are in a certain place, walang kuryente, walang wifi, walang anything. Wow, hindi ko ma-imagine. Ayoko tumira doon, di ba? Pero let's just for example, lumaki ka sa ganung environment. And then suddenly, may dumating na taga-globe. O taga-smart. And starts announcing, oh, okay, good news! Magkakaroon na ng kuryente at wifi dito sa baryo ninyo. So repent. Okay? Rearrange your life. 
You know? Ikaw naman parang, ah, ganun ba? Sige, balik lang po tayo sa mga siga, mga kapatid. Okay? Yung plancha natin, lagyan natin uling. Ha? Okay, praise you. No, no. Kasi sinasabi ng ano, nag-a-announce, tapos na yan. Hindi na tayo di uling. Hindi na tayo dapat mabuhay na para bagang, di ba? Hindi na tayo uh, magbibiskleta para magkaroon ng paypay. Meron na kuryente, pwede na electric fan. Okay? So this is what the Lord is saying. Come now, all of you, learn from me because you will experience the reality of God's presence in your life if you trust in me. Amen. Wow, ang hirap nyo i-convince. Sa totoo lang, halas mamatay-matay ako dito sa harapan. I-record nyo nga maigi ito, yung sinasabi ko. Okay? So by the blood of Jesus, it was not parang you know, something cheap. It, was, it took the very life of Jesus dying on the cross to make this a possibility. So, number one, never sell yourself short. Huwag mo sasabihin sa akin, eh, ganyan lang talaga ang buhay, you know, parang gulong. You know. No, no, this is not the life that God is calling you to live. Amen? Pangalawa, huwag kayong papagoyo kay Satan. Huwag kayong papayag na palitan niyang life na niya with something else. Because the world will always tell you, ay, huwag mo na, kalimutan mo na yung Christianity na yan. Just follow everybody's life. And, you know, mag-enjoy ka sa trabaho mo, sa karir mo. Kasi mas nandun lahat ng kasiyahan. It's a lie. It's a lie. There is no other life better and must, must better pa kaysa the life that is in Christ. Amen. Are you listening to me? Nothing else compares. Right? Kasi may isa po mapayag tayo kay Satanas who's trying to bait us, who's trying to tell us, Uy, kalimutan mo na yung mga, yung mga ganyan klase, yung mga parang holiness, holiness na yan. Hindi. Kung talagang mahal niyo isa't isa, sige na, sasaya kayo dyan. And the truth be told, <coughs> the truth be told, na kasalanan naman talaga, kasalanan at first naman talaga masarap. Anybody would agree with me? Hindi ka, sinungaling kayo pare-pareho ha. Kaya, is it true? Na ang ka- <coughs> is it true? Na ang kasalanan ay enjoyable at first. I mean, how can you be tempted kung di enjoyable yan? Right? Ang sabihin siya ni Satan, o ito kutsilyo, saksakim yung lalamunan mo. You won't do that. Instead, sasabihin niya sa'yo, ito, pag nar- ginawa mo ito, mararandaman mo ang tunay na pagmamahal. Ito, pag pinasok mo ito, mag-i-enjoy mo. And that's why you are tempted. Because you think na yung ino-offer niya is much better than ino-offer ni Lord. The Lord is inviting us to a life that is so much better than the best life this world can ever offer. At yung life na yan is found in Jesus. That is the good news. Amen? And then sabi pa ng author, baka makalimutan natin, by, by a new and living way, sabi niya, open for us through the curtain. Okay? Ano yung curtain na yun? Kasi sabi ko sa templo, may curtain, right? When Jesus died, yung curtain na yan sa temple was torn, you know, from top to bottom. Indicating na inaalis na ng Panginoon, whatever it is that might hinder you from coming into the very presence of God. So through that curtain, sabi niya, that is His body. And then sabi sa verse 21, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, Yung Old, sa Old Testament, yung mga tao, the only way na para makakalapit sila sa presensya ng Panginoon is kapag yung, yung high priest would represent them. Pupunta sa templo to offer sacrifices. Uh, you know, lagi niyang gagawin yung para yung mga tao would feel safe and secure in entering God's presence. O well, sabi ng author ng Hebrews, no more. Because we have Jesus as the high priest, the great high priest, who is forever interceding on our behalf. Ibig sabihin, kahit magkamali ka, kahit mabulilyaso ka, there is one who died for you. And you don't have to feel parang unworthy or unwanted. There is no unwanted child in the kingdom of God today. Maaari sabihin ng mga magulang mo, anak, aksidente ka lang, brown out lang noon. Hindi ka dapat lumabas sa mundong ito. Kaya lang, nandito ko na, wala kayong magagawa. But in the kingdom of God, everyone has desired and wanted. In fact, yun yung mga hindi naiintindihan ng mga tao when Jesus was preaching the gospel. So much so, nakini-criticize nila si Jesus for, ika nga, yung pagkaibigan niya sa mga sinners. And that's why in Luke 15, he told three parables. Lahat may kinalaman sa mga nawawala. And the third parable was the most famous of all, the parable of the prodigal son. At sa parable na yun, if you remember, di ba? Tukod sa, sa son, na younger son, na 
you know, wilagdas siya lahat ang inheritance niya, tapos nagsisi siya, babalik siya sa kanyang ama, sabi ng ama niya, sige, ipapatay natin si, si Blackie, hindi daw, ipapatay natin yung, kung sino man yung, yung baka, okay, let's celebrate, let's celebrate. Tapos yung uh, elder son, nagre-reklamo. Sabi niya, bakit ganyan ang trato mo sa, 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 sa anak mo na yan, pagkatapos walled the same, ganyan, ganyan. Ang sagot yung father, which symbolizes God, sabi niya, you must understand, itong kapatid mo dati was lost, but now he's found. He was dead, but now he's alive. So madaling salita, unless we understand the heart of God for us, ang gusto niya ay maranasan natin yung kanyang kingdom reign in the here and now. Hindi yung later pa. In fact, yung later will take care of itself. Yung pagpunta natin sa langit, it's just a bonus na lang yun. But even now, ngayon, you and I can experience the nearness and the reality of God's presence in our life. Don't sell yourself short. Huwag kang pumayag sa mga ipapalit ng kaaway sa mundong ito because what you have is the good news of Jesus Christ. Whew. That's the first one. Mahalaga yun. Kasi those of you na naliligaw ng landas, you forget what the gospel is all about. Okay? Second, be intentional about following Jesus together with others. Be intentional. You know, that is one thing that ikaw lang ang pwedeng gumawa. To decide to follow Jesus together with others. Now here's something interesting sa passage na to. Okay? I would not quote the entire thing, pero there are four exhortations sa passage natin. Okay? So, pero you would notice na lahat sila pare-pareho siya ng forma o pare-pareho sila ng uh, you know ng, 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 ng mode sabi niya verse 22 let us and then he says something verse 23 let us and in verse 24 let us and in verse 25 wala naman let us pero it is implied yung pa rin ang ibig niyang sabihin let us pa rin right in other words sinasabi sa atin ng author ng Hebrews halika na let's go let, let's do this together magsama-sama tayo let us it's not even parang pwersado ka it's not even parang, oh, pag hindi mo ginawa ito, pupunta ka sa impyeno. You know, it's more like an invitation. It's more like parang yung author saying, halika, halika, sama, sama ka. Let us. Let us do this together. Now, you know, one of the things na hindi na-realize ng maraming tao, especially young people today, may kinalaman sa concept ng will. Okay? Kasi isa sa mga totoo sa atin bilang human beings is that we have a will. In other words, we can decide. We can evaluate things and then we can decide. Now, here's the problem. Marami mga young people na because hindi nila naiintindihan ito, they think na yung kanilang nararamdaman o yung feelings nila, kumbaga, yun na yung pinakamahalaga and they don't have any will anymore. In other words, hindi sila makakahindi. Parang ganito, di ba? May naramdaman ka, na-inlove ka, na feel depressed ka. Kung ano man yung nararamdaman mo, yun na yun, that's it. You cannot decide anything else. Kaya maraming young people and even older ones who fall into sin. Pag tinan mo, ba't po ginawa yan? Iwan ko ba? Hindi ko alam eh. You know, nadala ako ng damdamin ko. But wala ka bang, ano, wala ka bang will? Can you not decide? And sabi niyo, hindi ako makadeside eh. Kasi nagalit ako eh. Nadepress ako eh. Nalungkot ako eh. Nainlove ako eh. So hindi ka ba makadeside? Hindi eh. Talaga, wala kang decision. Wala eh. O bigay mo sa akin ang cellphone mo. Ayoko nga. O may decision ka eh. Bigay mo sa akin yung wallet mo. Lahat ng pera mo dyan, bigay mo sa akin. Ay, ano, baliw. May decision ka eh. You can decide. Why is it doon nararamdaman mo yung nararamdaman mo? You gave up your right to decide. Now, another thing na very, very important maintindihan natin dito is that bagamat meron tayong will, our will is always subject to something higher. Wala tayong parang indefinite will, yung parang kahit anong gusto natin gawin. Contrary sa mga sales talk, pag kayo na bahagi kayo ng marketing, no? marinig niyo lagi yan. You can do anything that you believe in. Okay? Kaya mong gawin, walang imposible. Eh, totoo yan? Really? Lumipad ka nga? It's not true that you can do anything you want to do. In fact, isa sa mga realization na gusto ng Panginoon na ma-realize natin, that's why He allow us to fail at bakit may mga sitwasyon sa buhay na hindi mo makontrol para itigil mo na yung ilusyon that you can control everything. 
And so some of the mistakes sa mga tao is that they don't understand this. Akala nila yung by willpower alone, pwede ko mapigilan yung lust. By willpower alone, pwede ko, you know, ayusin ang sarili ko. No, your willpower does not have that power. Your willpower is always subject to a higher power. Which means, alin sa dalawa yan? Either the power of sin or the power of God. Ikaw ang may choice kung kinido ka magsasubmit. Alright? By default, lahat tayo are under the power of sin. Para katulad ng gravity. Do you know what gravity is? Huh? Well, gravity naman kayo. Hindi nyo alam yung gravity, right? Well, your gravity, of course, is a principle of law, di ba? Kung di ka naniniwala dyan, sa tingin mo, para mga hokus-pokus lang yan, well, pumunta ka sa tuktok ng, ano, ng kahit anong bahay, tumalong ka para malaman mo kung totoo yun. Because you would fall. Bukol. <coughs> Bukol. Okay. And you would fall, Right? Because you can, uh, kahit gustuhin mo pa na, hindi, tatalon ako sa building, and I believe that I can fly. I, I can fly, you know. Sige, mabilib ka sa gusto mo. Tumalong ka, patay ka pa rin. Because you cannot, ika nga, you cannot counter the power of sin in your life. And yet, that is gravity, di ba? Alam naman natin. If you want to overcome gravity, well, magtiwala ka sa higher power which is called the power of aerodynamics. Sumakay ka ng aeroplano and you will fly. Amen? In other words, sa buhay natin, ang pwede kong piliin lang is whether magpapasa ilalim ako kay Satan o magpapasa ilalim ako kay God. If I allow myself na hindi i-reject ko yung rule ni God sa life ko, then I will by autom- automation magpo-fall ako into a lifestyle of sin. But if I submit myself to God and say, God, I'm all yours and I will follow your way. Kaya sabi ni Jesus, unless you die to yourself, carry your cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. There's no other way. Kasi hindi mo kaya yun by yourself. You have to make a choice. Susunod ba ako kay Lord? O ihaya ako yung sarili ko lang mag-govern sa sarili kong buhay? Well, you do not have the resources necessary to govern your life. At tatalunin ka ng mundong ito tatalunin ka ng kaaway, you will fall into sin. You will fall because you cannot, by your own ability, decide to become righteous. But you can submit yourself to God. You can be a slave of righteousness. You can say, God, I submit myself to you. And moment by moment, pag merong decision na susunod ba ako sa sarili ko o susunod ako Lord, I will follow the Lord. And that's a choice that we, co- we can all make. Are you, re- are you listening? Alam mo bakit nagkakaroon ng problema iba sa atin? Because ayaw natin mag-decide to really follow Jesus as Lord and Savior of our lives. Iba sa atin, ginawa natin yun. The first time na born again tayo, Jesus, come into my life. Pero simula nun, ikaw na nag-take over. Simula nun, decision na yun, nag-freedom day ka, but after that, you're just living your life based on your own strength. That's why you will fail, you will fail, you will fail, you will fail. Are you listening? Wala kang kapasidad to change your life. But Jesus can transform your life if you will submit yourself to Him. Are you listening? Okay, so, the third key. So, una yung vision. Pakalawa yung intention mo. Kailangan mag-decide ka to follow the Lord. And then, the third key, here's the, the thing na siguro commonly naririnig mga tao. Prioritize the means. Okay? To remain spiritually healthy. Prioritize the means. Sinabi ni Jesus sa, sa Luke 14, sabi niya, Unless you hate your father and mother and etc. And, you know, and even yourself, you cannot be my disciple. Well, ang ibig niya sabihin doon, hindi yung patay mo yung magulang mo. Ibig sabihin noon, your life should be rearranged. In such a way na ang pinaka-importante sa iyo is no longer yung mga bagay-bagay that normally might be important to people. Ang dapat mangyari sa iyo is that you must begin to rearrange your life in such a way na yung priority mo would be the kingdom of God and His righteousness in your life. Now, to remain spiritually healthy, hindi naman talaga actually parang secret yan. Eh. It's all over ano, the Word of God. The first na kailangan nyo maintindihan, there are four means. Okay? The first, very quickly now, is what is called sacred rhythms. Pinag-uusapan dito sa church na to. Sacred rhythms. In other words, mga habits of life that focuses you on the kingdom of God. Now, how many of you, naranasan nyo na yung meron kang ini-expect na importante yung tawag? You know, maybe from a business contact siguro, or maybe a love life. Sino siyo naka-experience na ganun? Meron kang iniintay na importante yung tawag? 
Alright? Some of you, okay? So maybe the rest of you, hindi pa kayo tinatawagan ng kahit sino importante. So, kawawa naman kayo. But if you, if you have experienced this, okay? Diba, ganito yun eh, no? Sasabihin mo sa mga tao, Uy, may hinihintay akong tawag, ha? Uh, pag, pag tumawag si ganito, sabihin nyo sa akin, ha? Oh, sige, sige, sige. Sasabihin ng mga tao sa bahay nyo. Sige, sige. After one, mga ilang minuto, Uy, tumawag na? Tumawag na? Ah, hindi pa eh. Wala pa tumatawag eh. Tapos, minagreen. Krrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
everything that we believe, everything that we are hoping, it is yung may kinalaman sa promises of the Lord, may kinalaman sa revelation niya about what reality is all about. Let me tell you, okay? I'll just be honest with you. The way to strengthen our faith is to have a daily intake of God's Word para mas lalo natin naiintindihan ang reality from God's perspective. Kasi nabobombard tayo ng reality from the world's perspective. Ang sabihin sa atin ng mundo, kasi ganito yan, kasi ganito yan. So tayo, nabobombard yung mind natin and we're always being formed either by, by, the, by the world or by God. So kung di natin babantay ang sarili natin, yung philosophy natin, yung mindset natin, yung mga way of thinking natin, becomes more and more worldly over time. Instead of nanonurture tayo by the living words of God. Sabi ni Jesus, my words are spirit and life. The flesh counts for nothing. In other words, kung gusto mo magkaroon ng life sa buhay mo, listen to God. Let your mind be transformed, be renewed by the reality that He speaks about in His Word. Amen? Alright, sabi mo sa katawin mo, mga ikaw tinutukoy talaga ni Pastor. Kanina ko pa nararandaman eh. Okay. Ikaw talaga tinutukoy. Okay, so, let's move on to the third one. Service to God. Now, this is very important. Gusto mo bang manlamig? Huwag ka nang mag-ministry o kaya mag-ministry ka in the wrong way. Okay? What do I mean by service to God? Here's what the Bible says. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Now, importante yung combination na yun. Love and good deeds. Why? Because it's not about the things that you do, but the motivation of why you do it. Okay? Now, Walang masama na kung ang ministry mo ay eh, nag-aayos ka lang ng silya. Pero kung haba nag-aayos ka ng silya, nag- nagbububulong ka dyan para, sana naman yung mga uupo rito, disisirain nyo itong ina- inaayos ka ng silya. Pag dumating itong mga taong ito, si Dad Eric, guguloy na naman yung silya ko. So, you're not really doing it for out of love. You're just doing the task. Everyone who are in ministry here, you can be doing ministry not out of love. You're doing it out of task. And it can happen to any one of us. Even ako. I can be preaching without love. We can all be doing ministry kasi kailangan lang gawin, but not because we love people. Brothers and sisters, gusto mo maging ano, vibrant yung faith mo? Whatever it's ginagawa mo, do it in love. Do it with love. Kung nagahanda kayo ng mga camera, do it because you love people. Di ba, Warren? Love mo ba ako? Yeah, okay. Because without really being aware of this, may mga tao who are in ministry and out of love. Wala rin silang love. It's just something na ginagawa na lang, trabaho na lang. And you, you know when a person is doing that, di ba? When a person is doing something na wala nang love, para okay, practice na tayo. Okay, dali na. Tak, 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 tak. You know. So, okay, okay, okay. Tapos na yun. Okay, uwi na tayo. Kain na na. Because you're no longer doing it in love. Ah, alam mo yung pag-iisang tao doing it in love eh. Di ba? Nakita na ba kayo in love na tao? Ha? Pag-iisang tao motivated by, motivated by love, bisa mag- magbibigay lang ng isang regalo yan, talagang mitikuloso pa yan. Para, <laughs> sana magustuhan niya. Di ba? Tapos magbibigay mo yung regalo, para, ganda ba? Sa so, pag-tinagat, pag ang ganda nito, para, <laughs> Because you are motivated by love. Some of us are doing ministry with no love. And that's why the burnout ties a ministry. Alright, last. Spiritual companions. Okay? Spiritual companions. What do I mean by this? Okay? Well, if you want your faith na manatiling gising at buhay, don't cut yourself off from the very people who can encourage you. And don't cut yourself off as if hindi mo sila kailangan, kailangan mo sila at kailangan ka nila. Here's what the Bible says about this. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. So may mga tao gumagawa na ng ganon. But encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. You need to be connected in community if you want your faith life to be vibrant. Pag kinakatap mo sarili mo sa mga tao, yan ay yung 
Siguradong formula para mawalan ka ng gana, manlamig ka, and spiritually unti-unti para ma- may stuck ka na and you're no longer moving forward. Siguro may bitterness ka, may anger ka, galit ka sa mga tao, so you close off oh, every relationship and that is to your detriment. Mamaya ko natin marirealize mo parang wala nang buhay yung faith mo. Because that is not the will of God. So you see, itong mga sinasabi ko sa inyo, itong mga apat na to, these are exactly the elements of discipleship. And there's no other way to experience the reality of the kingdom of God except through discipleship. And you must be willing to rearrange your life in such a way. Now, if, let me tell you this, maging aalis ako sa iyo, okay, magagalit. Whatever decision na ginagawa mo sa buhay mo, always filter it based on one important question. How will this affect my discipleship in Jesus Christ? Any relationship, any career, any ministry, how will this affect my discipleship with and through Jesus Christ, my Savior? Will it lead me away? Will it co- cause me to be distracted? Itong relationship ba nito? Will it kill my faith and my, 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 my relationship with God? Ano magiging epekto nito? And if you are willing to just die to yourself and say no to anything, that would cause you not to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, that's the way to do it. Kasi pag kinompromise mo yun, pag ginawa mo secondary ang discipleship mo, pag ginawa mo parang least priority, you will experience the consequences of that in your own life. Are you listening? So, to avoid getting stuck, stay spiritually on track. Stay spiritually on track. Wag mo compromise yung faith mo. Wag mo compromise yung good news sa buhay mo. God is offering you a wonderful opportunity to experience the reality of God in the here and now. And He wants to work in and through you. Kaya nga sabi ni Jesus, if you remember one time, nung magpapaalam na siya, and people were asking Him, mga disciples niya, Lord, can you show us the Father? Ang sagot ni Jesus, Alaga, don't you know that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? At lahat ang mga sinasabi ko is the Father living in me. That's exactly the image na gusto ng Panginoon matutunan natin. Christ living in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who died for me and I will live for Him every day of my life. That's how you remain unstuck sa buhay mo. Again, here are my suggestions to you. Review the gospel, please. Huwag niyo kakalimutan. Renew your faith. Make a choice. Resolve to follow the Lord. Resolve to follow the Lord and finally remain accountable. Remain accountable. That's it. That's the essence of, essence of this series, mga kapatid. Naiginig po ba kayo? Alright? I want each of you to experience the reality and the wonderful blessing of walking with God in the here and now. Experiencing His miracles and enjoying His presence and being guided by His Spirit. You know, and becoming the kind of person He wants you to be. And accomplishing the good works that He has prepared in advance for you to fulfill. Life is good. There is a life that is so much better than the best life na in offer ng mundong ito. And we can find it through discipleship in Jesus Christ. Amen?